Hey everybody, it's Vicki with Dementia with Grace. Um, today is Monday, which means that it's a caregiver video. These videos are uh, a series of videos designed to help you with the caregiving issues that you yourself face as a caregiver. On Wednesdays, we talk about behavior issues um, because usually by the time somebody is looking for answers, it, it revolves around um, either a caregiving situation that they themselves are going through or a um, problem behavior that the person that they are caring for is going through. So these videos address those two issues. Mondays are caregiver videos and they're um, all down below. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can find, you can go to the Adventure with Grace channel. All of the videos are listed and they have, there's a playlist for caregivers, a playlist for problem behaviors. And so that's an easy way to find. While you're there, please subscribe. Today, we're going to talk about an issue that has bubbled up on my um, support group several times. I have gotten um, several posts about it on the Facebook support group, which is also Dementia with Grace on Facebook. And I've gotten several private messages saying, I need an answer to this question. So, instead of answering it in several different places, I decided to make it the focus of our caregiver video today. And the question is, when do I know that it's time for my significant other, loved one, fill in the blank, how do I know when it's time for them to be moved into um, skilled care? Whether that is an assisted living, or a skilled nursing home, or you know, a specialty care unit that is um, designed especially, get my words out, for folks with dementia. Um, so let's talk about that. Number one, it's a very personal decision about how you want to go forward and, and take care of someone in the latter stages of dementia. That is usually when um, you have to start looking for alternate ideas. They may have lived in your home for several years, or they may be living alone in their own home, and they've managed to be okay, not great, but okay. Um, and now it has come to, it's time that things are getting a little bit more serious. Um, there are safety issues involved, uh, personal care issues involved, that indicates that it's time to make some decisions. Now, Again, some folks like to age in place. And if the finances are there and you can hire somebody around the clock to stay with your mother in her home, that is wonderful. Um, and, and that might be the choice that you make. But that's still, you know, that's skilled nursing. I mean, that's skilled, um, that's having somebody there 24 hours a day. So that may be your choice and that may work well for your family and, um, and, and that may be something that is doable for you. Some folks either don't have the resources, the financial resources, or the, um, or, or the caregivers available to them. There are some areas of the, of the nation and the world that you just don't have enough people to provide 24-hour care privately in a home. It doesn't matter how much money you have. The, 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 um, the, the workforce, Okay, that's a good, a good way to put it, I guess. The workforce is just not there, or there's not anybody trained to deal with folks with dementia. So there's lots of caregiving ways. There's lots of ways to caregive for somebody. I don't judge any of it. Um, as long as you're taking good care of your person, or you are finding somebody to take good care of your person, then I, I don't judge how, how that happens. Um, I'm, help, I'm able to help in any of the situations. Um, but what I would say is, you know, people need to know when is the time. And so let me tell you when the time is. Is it when they're no longer safe, um, and, or they're no longer um, they're no longer making good decisions about their health care, which then in turn makes them not safe. Not safe looks like this. They're wandering, um, they're, um, they're driving when they shouldn't be driving and they're getting maybe, maybe getting away from their home and getting lost. They're leaving the stove on, um, they are leaving the bath water running or the water in the sink running and causing um, damage like that. That is when it's indicated to you that they are no longer safe. They're, they're no longer able to take care of themselves um, in a safe manner. 
The other thing is a medical situation where they're not taking their medicine or they're taking their medicine too often. You know, sometimes they will forget to take their medicine. Sometimes they'll take their medicine twice. And both of those issues are, um, are detrimental to their health. Um, either they're not getting their medicine or they're overdosing themselves. Even by a little bit can cause a tremendous issue. They may not be um, able to take care of their personal hygiene. And in that case, that turns into a, a skin issue, a skin integrity issue. If you're not getting good, um, good hygiene, if you're not bathing yourself, if you're not taking care of your toileting issues in the right way, that can absolutely cause infections, skin breakdown, those kinds of things that can be very troublesome to the person and very hard to, to um, and very hard to treat and, and resolve. Okay. So those would be some issues of, of where it would be, okay, i really, my hand is forced. And let me tell you, you pretty much know um, and, and I have had this, people tell me this, that, you know, I was told that I would just know when it was time, um, to make the decision to either, you know, to put my husband in a home or, um, find assisted living for my aunt or, um, you know, tell my mother that, you know, it's time to put daddy somewhere. It's, it's, it's too much for her to handle. So you get in those in those three situations. It's too much for the person to handle medically, physically, emotionally, um, financially. It may be too much. Um, so that would be one trigger that would say, yeah, it's time. The other is safety awareness and um, being able to be safe in the home in all manners. Um, being able to stay in the home, not leave the light on, uh, the uh, not the light, but the stove on, not leave the water running, those kinds of things that could cause... Um, issues. And number three is the medical model where you would say, you know, th they're just not able to take care of themselves and we're not able to go in and take care of them or bring them here or have someone go into the home. So those would be the three scenarios where you would um, then decide, okay, it's time to make the decision. Now, um, leading right into that is how to find a good home. Before you need it, I would say these two things. Before you need it, early on in the disease process, if you have the time, if they have been diagnosed with something early on, talk to them. Doing something with them, uh, making a decision with them, and not doing something to them or making a decision for them is always better. Um, if you can. Now, there are some people who get to this point and they never had that discussion. They never found out what their preference was, you know, what their person's preference was, aging in place versus going to a home. Some people don't mind going to a home at all. You know, I, that, that would be so difficult for folks when I was actually in, you know, day-to-day -day practice and I was a nursing home um, memory care director and someone would, you know, come and they would tell me privately, maybe after their family left, I'm so relieved. You know, I don't have to worry about three meals a day. Somebody's going to do that for me. I don't have to worry about the stairs. I don't have to worry about, um, you know, I know my memory is slipping and I don't have to worry about anything anymore because I know that I'm safe and I'm looked after. Um, they sometimes would have um, a very good response to having people their own age to be around. People their own age in a, in a similar um, mental capacity so that they didn't feel like they were the they were the dumb one. I mean, that's what they would say to me. You know, I always felt dumb or I, you know, I was so forgetful that, it, you know, this is early on, this is in stage two, three, that they're able to tell me these things and they wouldn't be able to express it uh, that fluently in stage five. Um, but early on, they would tell me, I'm so relieved. I'm so relieved that I'm here. So sometimes it's the, more of the stress of, I promised mama I would never put her in a nursing home. That's a lot of stress to put on you. It's a lot of stress to put on yourself. And you just can't say that in this day and age. People are living so much longer um, with more complicated medical cases that cannot be managed in the home. Somebody getting eight liters of oxygen cannot be managed in the home, for instance. You know, just little things like that. Um, you know, they need skilled nursing that cannot be provided in the home. 
you know, it used to you were born at home and you died at home and, you know, and, and there was your good life uh, in between those two points and then it was over. Now, you know, we can keep people alive a lot longer, um, but it's a more complicated case to manage and that cannot be managed at home sometimes. Dementia is one of those diagnoses that is very, very difficult to manage, especially in the later stages. And you need more help than you can give. If you are working full time, if you have a family, you know, whatever, it doesn't even matter what your situation is. There are people who could sit there 24 hours a day with somebody and have no other responsibilities, but they can no longer meet their needs at home. That absolutely happens. And when that happens, you need to know that, okay, I'm doing the best thing that I can for my mother given the given the set of set of circumstances that we have to deal with okay and don't give yourself any any guilt so if you have permission from your family yay if you don't have permission from your family um then just you just have to assume uh, uh, what's called substitutive judgment to say if she was able to make a decision what decision would she make would she want to be unsafe in her own home you know would she want to be um subjected to not being able to take her own medicine and 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 get her her medical case complicated by the fact that you know she's either not taking her medicine right or she's you know she's forgetting to take it or taking it twice i think she would want help with that if she could make her decision herself now your due diligence is to find the very best possible home that you can find. And what that looks like, an assisted living, a skilled nursing, a medical um, um, memory care, um, that's going to look different in your community. But just a simple Google search, you know, will find, you know, care homes in your vicinity. And then you just need to go visit them. Just like if you are shopping for a house or shopping for a car, you shop for a nursing facility. Same way. I am going to drop down in the show notes uh, a link to my blog, and I will have the information about there, how to choose a nursing home, what questions to answer, ask and uh, get answered. Um, there's lots of good things that you can, can use to do your due diligence and find a good place for your person. Listen, there are lots of horror stories on the news about nursing homes, about abuse and neglect and all of those kinds of things, but let me tell you, I am in and out of nursing facilities all the time. That's part of what I do. I am a consultant for folks. And I see, plus I worked in the nursing home industry forever. It feels like since I was a child, it feels like. You know, in my early 20s, I started. So over almost 25 years now, I've been in the nursing home industry in some way. Um, and so I know what it takes, what a good nursing home looks like, um, what what um, questions you need to ask, and what are the answers you should expect. And I'm going to write that up and, and put it down below, um, so that you can have you, you can print it out, you can take it with you, you know, whatever. Um, but you know, there are some some um, some ways to to find the best home. Talk to their doctor, talk to nurses, talk to friends. Um, you know, there are people who have their people in these nursing homes, and those are the people that you should talk to. When you go to visit a nursing home, ask the residents, are you happy here? What's the best thing about this home? What's the worst thing about this home? What is the, um, what, what could my person expect if I were to admit them here? Talk to them, talk to the nurses, talk to um, the activities directors and the social services people. There's a marketing person probably that's going to be showing you around, and that's great, but they're taught to tell you the very best things and to put the very best spin on things and to put everything in the best possible light. The honest answers you get are from the other residents, um, the other residents' families, the staff on the unit. Okay, um, I'll go ahead and give you a tip. One of the best things to ask is, um, who is your longest standing caregiver? You know, who has been here the longest? You know, these folks, people that, places that I go, they have people that have been there 20, 25, 30 years. Go and talk to those people and say, why do you still work here after 20 years? What is it? You know, what is it about this place that has captured 
um, has captured your heart and, and why do you still you know work here those kinds of things that's a good that's a very good inside tip um, to talk to the person that's been there the longest talk to the, the resident that's been there the longest and the employee that's been there the longest and get the scoop and tell them listen I'm having a hard time deciding whether to place my mother here and I need to know the dirty details I need to know what's going on there are a lot of really, really outstanding caregivers in the world that work at these homes. And, you know, they would no sooner put up with a, with a mention of neglect or abuse than you would. And they, they, um, they, they take pride in their work. They take pride in taking care of the best generation that our, our nation has ever seen, I think. And, you know, they, they take pride in that. And so they will tell you straightforward what you need to know about the place and do that five or six more times. However many places are in your home, go um, in your area, however many homes are in your area, go to all of them and conduct the same kind of interview. Now, telling your person that they're going to a nursing home, I believe in shaking hands with the truth. And I believe that we are all adults and that we can hear hard news and, and make um, good judgments about that hard news. Now, if you have somebody who is in maybe stage five, stage six, they may not totally understand what you're telling them. And I wouldn't tell them more than once, but I would say, Daddy, we're at the point where we can no longer take care of you at home and we're gonna have to find another home for you to live in. Um, and then just tell him where that's gonna be. Mama, you know, I cannot come and live with you. You know, Susie can't, you know, um, Jim can't. None of your children can come and live with you. Um, but we are so concerned about, um, about you and about your safety. So we need to find a home for you. You will sometimes not have an issue with it. Sometimes they understand they have enough insight left to know that they can't be taken care of at home. Sometimes you get outright resistance and refusal and tears and hollering and anger and guilt thrown your way. In those situations, you have to know, and if you're already asking the question, you kind of already know, something's got to be done and I'm the one that's got to do it. So, you know, you just do what you have to do and, and place them where you know that they will be safe. And if you've done your due diligence, you've asked your questions, you've figured it out financially, you know, you know that this is the best choice for them at this time in their lives, then you just have to do it. Don't sneak, don't sneak about it. Don't say, we're going to go, we're going to go get a, a bowl of ice cream and then you drive them to the place and then there they are and you leave. Don't do people like that. I, I don't think anybody that's looking at this video would do people like that because um, you you looking up this information and watching this video to this point shows me that you have a vested interest in your person and that you want what's best for them and you're trying to gain knowledge and understanding of the best thing to do for them. So I don't think you're the kind of person that would tell them they're going for ice cream and then drop them off at the assisted living and not come back for a month. That happens. It absolutely happens. Um, um, you know, we have people that say, she doesn't know me anymore. Um, Y'all just take good care of her and, um, and, you know, um, let me know when she passes away. That absolutely happens. Family members can be, um, can be, I want to say cowards, but I guess that's not the politically correct thing to do, but you're being brave. You are being brave because you are here looking for information. So let's not talk about those kind of people. Let's keep our thoughts on your kind of people. Um, take them and say, you know, mother, we're moving here because this is a safer place and then do it. Don't argue. You know, if she argues, that's okay. The folks that are receiving you are, are you know, accustomed to having folks come into their care who um, may not think that they need that level of care. They may not, you know, want to be there. Um, we, are, we are trained um, and staffed to where we understand, you know, what is going on and we can help smooth the transition. There are some homes who say, don't come back for two weeks. That is not my philosophy. My philosophy is to come on and come every day. Um, it's not going to be any worse or any better um, than staying away for two weeks. To me, I think you just need to be there. I think you need to tell them, you know, we're not abandoning you here. You know, we're going to be here every day. 
um, it will give you, you will be relieved, I believe, um, and you can read, there's so many good, good, um, um, testimonies to this online when you Google, you know, how to tell my mother she's going to a nursing home or, you know, something like that. Google is your friend, honey. Um, there are so many people that say I was so relieved because I could finally be the daughter again and not mother's caregiver. You know, there were hired caregivers. There were people in those, in, in those assisted livings and skilled nursing who were paid um, to be there for a shift and go home. And, you know, so there's three different people across three different shifts taking care of your mother. At home, it was just you. And so you could not be the daughter, um, maybe that you wanted to do. You couldn't do the fun things that you wanted to do. But once you get that caregiving off of your shoulders, that day-to-day, 24-7 caregiving off of your shoulders, it opens up more time for you to actually spend with the person that you love. And, and you become a daughter again, a son again, a husband again, a wife again. And you allow us professional caregivers to take care of your person and free up that time for you. Okay? There's a lot that could be discussed, but I try to keep these videos about 20 minutes long because I know that you have a lot going on in your life and it's very hard for you to get 20 minutes to sit down and, 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 and um, have a conversation with somebody. Um, but I encourage you to ask me any more questions, whatever I can, whatever, in whatever way that I can help you, I would love to. Drop a question down below on the, under this YouTube video, and I check on those, and I can, I can answer those questions. If you need um, a support group where people are going through what you're going through, come on over to Facebook. Um, just up at the Facebook, at the top with the search bar, just search Dementia with Grace group. And it's also a link under here. It's a link under uh, in the show notes. It, you link you on over. But if you want to just type it into Facebook, we're Dementia with Grace group. Website, DementiaWithGrace.com. That is under construction right now. Um, so it, it may be up, it may be down when, when you try to access it. Um, but I am available for hire. Um, we can FaceTime, we can Skype, and we can get down into... The details of what you need for your person and I'm cheaper than a plumber <laughs> so it's um, it's a resource that you absolutely can use and I would love to help you um, you know in these videos and in on the you know all the, I have to speak in generalities but you and I can have a FaceTime video just like this right here and you can tell me the details of your situation and I can help you problem-solve that's what I'm about that's what a a dementia practitioner does. Um, we consult with families and homes um, to try to make the lives of um, caregiving caregivers easier so that they can have a better quality of life with the person that they love. I don't know you, but I love you. I love caregivers. I love folks with dementia. I love my job. I love what I do, and I would love to help you. If you need me, my um, address, my email address is Vicky V I C K Y at dementiawithgrace.com. And you can reach me right there very easily. And I'll be checking my emails in case you need me, okay? All right. I thank y'all for your time. It's gone 22 minutes now. And I think that's I think that's perfect. All right. I will talk to y'all soon. Take care. Bye.